and welcome to another show. You know, it is a fact that nearly half of Americans do not believe that they're saving enough for education. And did you know the tuition for in-state students attending a four-year public college increased by 1.6%, and students' tuition attending a four-year private institution increased by 2.1% during the 21-22 academic year. Now, have you heard of 529 plans? They're only being used by 13% of Americans. That's an 8% uh, point drop, actually, since uh, 2020 in the pandemic. In fact, I think it's even more than that now. Uh, We're going to find out 35% of Americans use a personal savings account as part of their education savings strategy. But only 19% of adults are aware of 529 plans that they fund a lot more than just higher education. So we've been fortunate to be able to get hold of Stephen Rushoff, who's the principal of Edward Jones. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me on. It's great to be with you. Well, uh, it's been kind enough, folks, to share more about the tools that provide help to fund certain you know, qualified education. Let's start with this, Steve. What is a 529 plan? I mean, what are the benefits in using it? Because I, I do believe that there are many benefits if you know what to do. Yeah, 529 plan is a type of savings plan. Uh, many of us are familiar with 401k plans. It's a, it's a plan that's named after a section of the tax code 401k that helps you save for retirement in a tax advantage way. A 529 plan, you can think of it as almost a cousin to that plan. It's also named after an IRS tax code, section 529, hence the numbers in front of the name. Um, But it helps you save for education costs in a tax advantage way. So the way the plans work is you set up a plan on behalf of the beneficiary. This is typically, you know, your child or your children. Mm -hmm. Uh, You make contributions to the plan. Uh, Those contributions are invested and earn investment earnings. Those investment earnings are tax deferred and potentially even tax free if used for qualifying education costs. In addition to that federal tax benefit, some states will allow a deduction of a contribution to a 529 plan from a state income tax. So there's really a lot of tax benefits um, that quite frankly, folks who aren't using 529 where it's appropriate are leaving money on the table because they're missing out on these helpful tax benefits that make every dollar saved go farther. My word, it sounds like uh, one can't afford not to have one, to be honest with you. I mean, despite weathering a pandemic and rising inflation right now, uh, you did a new study, right, that found that 55% of Americans say that the current socioeconomic conditions in the country uh, have not changed their opinions on the importance of saving for higher education. And while education savings do remain a high priority, I guess, as you say, many Americans are leaving money on the table. So this new survey that you did, what did it really reveal to you, Steve? Yeah, Ken, this is our 11th year of doing the survey. We've we've done it for the last 11 years, and we do it to raise awareness around the importance of saving for education and just understanding the awareness that people know about tools like 529 plans to help them save. Uh, What we learned is that saving for education remains a high priority for the majority of Americans. 55% said it's very important. Um, That's really interesting, given all the headwinds and and, and all the things competing for the consumer dollar these days. We've weathered the pandemic for three years. Now we've got high inflation. We've got market volatility. So there's a lot for competing for consumer attention and their dollars. But they still tell us, the majority tell us it's important to save. About half are saying that they're not saving enough. And then about almost two-thirds are not aware of a 529 plan as a tool that they can use to save. And as you mentioned earlier, the usage of these plans is down to 13%. That's that's some of the lowest percentages that we've seen in this survey. Mm. Well, uh, you know, how is it then, Steve, that people don't know about these plans? Because quite frankly, uh, it sounds bloody marvelous. I mean, I'd want to get one. Yeah. The lack of awareness is the biggest barrier that we face, just being aware that this tool is out there. Um, But even those who are familiar with 529 plans, many people aren't familiar with the flexibility of these plans, both in terms of the use of the funds and the qualifying sort of uh, expenses that can be um, withdrawn from a 529 plan and paid for, um, and also the flexibility in terms of who can benefit from these plans. 
And I'd be happy to go into that if it's interesting to you or your listeners. Oh, my word, please do. <laughs> so let, maybe I'll start with the use of funds. So we've been talking a lot about college uh, costs, and, and appropriately so. That's a big number. I mean, four years of college can start at $100,000, but it can go on up from there up to 300000 depending oh, upon right. what school you're choosing, private, out of state, all that's a big number. And so saving, starting to save for that, saving early is really important. So in a 529 distribution, college tuition, obviously, uh, books, room and board, uh, even equipment like laptop computers, these are all qualifying distributions from a 529 plan that preserve the tax benefits. But it's not just college education. They can be used for K-12 through education costs, trade school or apprenticeships if you don't go to a traditional college. Uh, they can even be now used to repay some student loan debt. So the use of the funds is really wide. So there's additional flexibility. It, Go ahead. Ken. No, no, no. I'm sorry. They, you keep on going. Additional flexibility. Well, additional flexibility in terms of who can benefit. So we talked about the owner of the plan setting these up for a child, and that's probably the most traditional or common use. Um, but that beneficiary um, could be changed at any time for any reason. So you could start with child number one, use some of the proceeds, then shift it to child number two, use some of the proceeds and so on. So the beneficiary can be changed at any time for any reason. In addition, the beneficiary doesn't have to be related to you. It could be your child, it could be your grandchild, it could be a niece or a nephew. Um, so really, it could be a friend's child. It could even be yourself. Let's say you set one up for your child and there's funds left over and you decide to go back to school because you're bored in retirement and you wanna get your PhD. Yeah. You can use the 529 plan for yourself to pay for your education or your student loan debt. Well, there you go. I mean, this is amazing. Where on earth can people find out about this? One of the best things to do is to get educated. And a great way to do that is work with a qualified financial advisor. We've got 18,000 plus of them at Edward Jones that help on this kind of thing every day. They advise on trade-offs of saving for education versus saving for other goals like retirement. And how do you balance those two appropriately? Uh, how much should you save? And they can even help you set up a 529 plan if it's right for you. So that's a great way to get educated and to take action. My word. Well, hey, listeners, I mean, some ears pricked up there, I'm sure of it, a chance to go back and maybe finish something off. But, you know, in a nutshell, what do you think some of the barriers are that are keeping Americans from using the 529 plans? It's really lack of awareness. They're not aware of 529 plans and its benefits, which is why we do this every year to generate awareness. Um, they're using other vehicles, like one, almost one-third are using their own savings accounts, um, which can be fine. It can make some sense, but they're also not experiencing some of the tax benefits we talked about with 529 plans. So it's really lack of awareness is the biggest barrier. Mm. Well, um, people can find out a lot more now if they'd like to go online. And um, I think it's www.edwardjones.com forward slash... Uh, U.S. dash E, and this is a long one. Easily, really, quite frankly, uh, Stephen, just go to edwardjones.com, have a look through, look at the tabs. That'll take you there, wouldn't it? Yeah, we actually created a site for your listeners for this topic. So if they go to edwardjones.com slash education savings, that's edwardjones.com slash education savings, they can learn more about 529 plans, some of the topics we've talked about, general strategies for saving for education. It's really a great resource and it's a great way to get started. Yeah, a great way to read, you know, with a cup of joe and in your pajamas, it doesn't matter. It's a good way to start. Well, that's a lot shorter than what I got there in front go. of me. <laughs> that particular address. Okay, <laughs> uh, folks, remember, uh, edwardjones.com forward slash education savings. That's pretty simple. edwardjones.com education savings, right, forward slash education savings. Wow, look, you know, the, this is a fabulous thing. I mean, think of the potential that people could utilize the 529 plans for, Steve. I mean, it could open up a whole new world for a lot of people. And uh, I'm surprised it dropped that much, though, uh, you know, uh, because of the pandemic. I think it was up to 21% or something. We agree, and that's, yeah. that's why we're doing this, Ken. We just want to raise awareness and raise education 
of consumers out there. My daughter is 14 years old. She's going to be going to college in a few years. And we, we opened a 529 plan years ago and very glad that I did. It's, it's going to help us tremendously. Fantastic. Well, thank you for bringing it to light. I appreciate that for my listeners, Steve. Uh, Steve Rushoff, ladies and gentlemen, from Edward Jones. Just remember, you can uh, now, oh, you've got a pen now? Okay, you can go to that address, Edward Jones, www.edwardjones.com forward slash education savings. Thanks, Steve. Lovely having you on. Thank you.